Welcome to Evening Prayer with the Stamford Methodist Circuit. We start with the short prayer which we've been using to begin our time of prayer each evening this week. So let us pray. God our Creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious Gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today, 40 days after Christmas Day, the Christian Church is marking the feast of the presentation of Christ in the Temple, also known as the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or more popularly as Candlemas. The Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, which has been the guide for our evening prayers this week, provides for this festival to be observed. So our recommended daily Bible readings take a break from the Epistle of James tonight, as instead we hear St Luke's Gospel record of the events which the Festival of Candlemas celebrates. Its common name, Candlemas, suggests that it's a festival associated with candles, with light. So we listen out for Jesus being referred to as a light for the nations when we come to our Bible reading. This festival of light is celebrated at the time of year, at least in our northern hemisphere, when the dark, cold days of winter are not quite behind us. Nonetheless, we can detect the daylight growing longer by a couple of minutes or so with each passing day. If you shared in these evening prayers yesterday, you may remember that the worship song which came towards the end of our time of prayer was Longing for Light. We Wait in Darkness, Christ Be Our Light, by Bernadette Farrell. That worship song was a sort of anticipation of today's celebration, which we now continue with a worship song by Graham Kendrick, Like a Candle Flame. i 
And so let's hear David Suchet reading Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40, from the New International UK version of the Bible. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. In the form of the canticle known as the Nunc Dimittis, Simeon's response in song, which we've just heard as part of our Gospel reading, has become a regular spoken or sung part of evening prayer offered in many churches for several hundred years. So we continue in a spirit of prayer as we listen to a piece of music which you may recognise from the 1970s BBC TV dramatisation of John le Carré's Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy novel. We listen to the words of the Nunc Dimittis, set to music by Geoffrey Burgon.
and let us pray. Lord God, like Simeon, may we grow old in hope and in wonder. Like Anna, may we be in love with you all our days. May we be open to truth and open to surprises. May we let your spirit into our lives. May we let your justice change our behaviour. May we live in the brightness of your joy, now and always. Amen. The latest edition of the Connection magazine from the Methodist Church, which we've just seen the front cover of, has the theme, Kindle a Flame. In his editorial, David Perry recalls words from Bruce Springsteen's hit song, Dancing in the Dark. The words are, you can't start a fire without a spark. Well, the articles in the Connection magazine focus on how sparks of the fire of God's Holy Spirit are at work in various ways through the Methodist Church, being fanned into flames, flames of faith, in new and exciting ways. So keep an eye out for free copies of the Connection magazine in your local Methodist Church, or you can access and read it via the Methodist Church website. This Winter 23 edition of the Connection magazine takes its title Kindle a Flame from Charles Wesley's great hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. The first verse of it ends, Kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. That's a good prayer to offer, especially on this festival of Candlemas. So an image of a flickering candle flame leads us into our closing prayer. As the candle, so is my life. Flickering, burning, changing, a light and warm, with the light which is you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this time of Candlemas prayer. God bless you. <laughs>